Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back. Cumberland Outdoorsman here with another one of my 22 series videos. Let me take this opportunity to wish all of my viewers and subscribers a belated but happy new year. We're about a week or so into the new year, so let's get it started out right by featuring another American classic, the Remington Model 121 Fieldmaster. There you can see the Fieldmaster designation, and uh, it's a pump action 22 with a very short bolt throw, as you can see. And it was based on the Remington Model 12 design, which I have right here. If you've watched my channel, you've seen this little gun before. This is one that I restored back in the fall of the year. This is a John Pedersen original design. He was the one that came up with this little gun here. And he came up with so many other ingenious designs as well. This one here has an octagonal barrel. It's a tubular fed magazine. It also has that very short bolt throw. It's chambered in 22 short, long or long rifle. This one here has a straight comb stock. There were models available with the pistol grip stock. And I believe this is one of the earliest ones. I think this is a 1910. So it's been around for a pretty good while, folks. Good little shooter. But the Model 121 replaced the Model 12 in 1936 and continued on until about 1954. And then in 1955, Remington introduced their Model 572 pump action Fieldmaster. The Model 121 was a further evolution of the Model 12, really. It was based on the Model 12 action design here. This one here has a more robust slide handle. It's wider and just easier to get a hold of. It has the pistol grip. So, you know, it's a good good sized little rifle for a 22. It also has the tubular magazine here. And uh, it was designed by C.C. Loomis and G.H. Garrison. But uh, there were several variations of this gun. There was the standard grade, which I think I have here. And then there was the peerless grade, there was a premier grade, and then there was a special grade that undoubtedly featured real fancy walnut stocks and a high polished steel. And uh, there was even a smoothbore design that had no rifling in the barrel and it would accommodate the 22 shot cartridge for use on vermin type pests such as rats and uh, mice and also for feral pigeons, starlings, things like that, that you would encounter at close range and were fair game for the 22 shot cartridge. Pretty much a close range proposition though, folks. And those have become real collector's items now because they're quite rare from what I understand. Um, there were about 200,000 of the these units made back in the day. And, uh, you know, that was a time when America had some dark days during the Depression. The Depression started in 1929 and continued on until the Second World War. And uh, then the economy rebounded and Americans could afford more extravagant things, you know, once the money started rolling again. But uh, it was a long, hard road for many folks back then. This one here I got, uh, just recently and it had some missing and broken parts. It had a broken firing pin. The action lock was not working correctly because someone left out some parts and didn't install everything correctly. But I got everything taken down, right down to the last spring and pin and restored the old gun back to shooting condition. The barrel's in really good shape inside. It's just shiny as a new dime. And uh, we're going to get it out here and shoot at some targets with it. We're going to have a little fun with this little rifle and put her to the test. I've never shot it before, so let's go to my range and take a few shots with it. Okay, folks, I picked up some of this Norma TAC-22. This is actually made by RWS. 
as you can see on the head stamp here, it has that classic R stamped into it. And uh, we're going to load up this little 121 and make sure it's not loaded here. Load up a few rounds and I want to hit that target out there and see where the gun's shooting. I think I got it pretty close. I took a few shots with it a while ago and uh, got a target out there at about 30 yards. So let's see where the gun's shooting. Okay, we'll get zoomed in here. I'll be shooting at that top target there. So let's see where this little rifle is hitting at that distance. Shooting open sights here, folks. Looks like they're all in the target there. Well, folks, I got 12 rounds loaded in this magazine here, so let's see how well this little rifle does at 50 yards on those steel targets that I traditionally shoot at in my videos. So let me get zoomed in here. There you can see a little prairie dog sticking up. Oh. 35 yards out, and then those other targets down there at 50 yards. Let's see if we can make that prairie dog pop up and down. Okay, let's shoot that squirrel on the right. Now for the bunny in the middle. Squirrel on the left. All right, I see a swinging target down there on the right, just above that fairy dog. There's a swinging target over on the left. Let's see, I see a couple of cans sitting out there. Let's try the one on the left first. One on the right. Not sure if I'm hitting those cans or not. Okay guys, that was kind of fun, but I missed a few shots as you could tell. Just not used to this gun, I guess. So we're gonna load up a few more. Uh, we'll probably put about eight rounds down range here. Get her loaded up here. Shooting open sights can be a lot of fun, but it can be a challenge too, you know. Just like I say, <laughs> a scope is always more accurate and easier to shoot. It is for me anyway. Let me try that prairie dog one more time there. For the squirrel on the right. The 
bunny rabbit. Squirrel on the left. Now we'll shoot that swinging target again. Then we'll try that can on the right. I see it rocking. I think what's happening is those rounds are going right through those cans, so I'm hitting them. Well, folks, now we're going to try some of this Winchester Super X hollow point. This is high power ammunition, and I don't normally recommend shooting real high powered ammunition in these older guns, but uh, I think this little Model 121 can pretty well handle it. I've got some water filled cans out there that I want to try and destroy with this gun. <laughs> so we'll get it loaded up here. And we'll take a few shots and see how the old gun can perform with this high velocity stuff. So far it's cycling and handling what I'm shooting here very well. There you can see the cans lined up. I've got a plastic water bottle on the left and then some water filled soda cans. So we'll go from that water bottle first and then move my way from there to the right. Okay, I had to set some of those cans back up because they got knocked over. Let's try it again here. All right. Well, guys. After having the chance to take this little gun out here and take a few shots with it, I gotta say I'm pretty well pleased with it. It performed really well and shot fairly accurately, as well as I could shoot with open sights anyway. Uh, one thing about it is it is not equipped for scope mounts. It's not drilled and tapped, it does not have a dovetail groove, but personally I just cannot see drilling and tapping holes in this old gun but it does have accommodations for a peep sight here. So if I run across a set of peep sights for it, I may pick those up. And uh, generally speaking, for myself, I shoot better with peep sights than I do with open sights, more accurately and more consistently. Um, and since this is an outdoor channel, I have to say that uh, this gun would uh, make a good hunting rifle you know if you like to go squirrel hunting or rabbit hunting for example after an overnight snow then the sun is out and you go track rabbits and hunt them with a 22 that's a lot of fun folks and it puts a lot of good meat on the table so yeah these old guns are uh, still available every now and then you'll run across them at maybe pawn shops or gun shows or whatever but uh, they're becoming less and less available and with time, the value has just gone up. So if you own one of these, make sure you take good care of it. But if you run across a good one that you really like and you feel like you deserve it, I'd probably recommend it, folks, because they're good, positive shooting guns. You know, they're quick handling, smooth operating, and reasonably accurate. Same thing would go for the Winchester Model 61 or 62 
or the Savage Model 29, which is not quite as refined a gun, but would still make a good little hunting rifle. Or if you just want to get out and do some informal plinking or target shooting, they're well suited for that. But anyway, I'm going to leave it at that and wish you all the best. Hope you enjoyed this video. And until next time, remember, if you like to go hunting, fishing, camping, shooting, hiking, whatever your outdoor pursuit might be, I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. But also remember, hit that like button, smash the bell icon, and subscribe. That way you'll know when more videos like this one will be coming your way. So until next time, y'all take good care and get out there and enjoy the great outdoors. If you go shooting, have a lot of fun. Just make sure you do it safely. I'll be seeing you.